British steak pudding, often made with steak and kidney, um, but in this case my brother and I suffer a little bit from gout, so uh, we're leaving out the kidneys and we're just having it as a steak pudding, which is perfectly uh, viable, perfectly authentic. So we've got uh, 700 grams of beef chuck, which is cut into, already cut into nice uh, big chunks. I've got a, a small onion, which is about the size, about half of a medium sized onion. And I've got some salt, got some pepper, and I've got 70 grams of beef suet. Now, uh, quite often we'll use a Tora brand, but I got this one from Aldi and it's perfectly good. And um, for those of you in the United States, I'll try and leave a link in the description below this video to where you can purchase that online, because I know it's not easy for you to obtain. You'll need a couple of cups of all-purpose or plain flour, as we call it. Uh, in Britain, you can also use self-raising flour for this and in which case you won't need the baking powder but uh, I'll be I'll be using plain flour all purpose flour and adding in some baking powder you'll need a bowl for mixing your flour in which is the large one there and you'll need a pudding bowl something like that in which you make the pudding I've got a sheet of um, aluminium foil which I've put into a a, a sort of a round shape and I just fold it into a shape like that and then I just cut something like that to make it into something resembling a circle so that's quite easy done you'll also need a large pan for steaming and ideally it will be a large pan into which you can fit the pudding bowl and uh, again a pan with a heavy lid if the lid's got a vent in it take a little bit of your um, aluminium foil and block up the vent because you'll be steaming this pudding and it steams for about three hours so you need uh, you need plenty of time to make this one okay for the pastry i want one two cups of uh, plain flour or self-raising flour. If you're not using self-raising flour, you'll need to add in a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. Into that goes your 70 grams of suet. And we stir to mix. Into that goes a little pinch of salt. And then we make it into a, a fairly firm dough with water. It's fairly straightforward this. It really is an, an, an easy thing to do. It's easier than it looks it, it, to make this pudding. It really is, seriously. So you add a little water at a time because you don't want to go crazy with it and then stir it until it starts picking the flour off the side of the bowl. Really that simple and then it's more or less ready. Now you don't want to overwork this dough but you can now get in with your hands and work it around the bowl. It should start cleaning off the the dough, the flour that's on the inside of the bowl. And you notice I'm not really kneading it so much as just working it around the bowl. I'm going to get that now on, the, on the, my stone surface. As you see, I've got it onto a floured surface. I'm going to take one third of that away for the lid. And then I'm going to shape that and get it to a size something like that and I'm just going to grease a bowl I'm just doing it with a bit of spray oil 
and that will help the uh, pudding come out when it's steamed. So what I'm going to do now is just going to drop that dough inside my bowl and work it up the sides. And I want to work it evenly up the sides, as even a thickness as I can manage, all the way up. Leave that aside for a minute, and then what we'll do is we'll get the meat out, and we'll get it ready to go in the pie. So, into the bowl goes the meat, and I'm using the same bowl. And into that, I want a pinch, about, say, a tablespoon of flour, maybe a little more, and I mix that in. And then we take our onion, which is very finely cut up, very fine, and that goes in, along with the seasoning and that's as simple as salt and pepper. I like a lot of pepper and because it's effectively a, a, a pie filling it's a force meat so you need to season it well. So season it as much as you would season that amount of, of beef and then go in again mix it all together well. And it should form a fairly sticky mix. If it isn't, just add in a bit more flour. Once you've done that, that can go straight into the pie, into the uh, pudding bowl, and you press that down. Put that to one side for a second, take your lid. and form into a circle and then press it onto the pudding to seal off the lid and then you take the edges and you push them in you want to seal that off just taking them off the edge like that and pushing them in to seal off the edge just make sure that is pretty well sealed and then we take our first we take our parchment paper this one's a silicon paper lay that on top and then take the foil lay that on top and form it around evenly around the lid having trouble tying the string so I've decided to fold in those to make that a bit tighter around there so the string doesn't fall off and that seems to have worked so now we've got the pud we've got it nicely sealed and ready to steam so all the rest of the action takes place over the stove. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. Uh, we have, uh, again, we have Bradley Bennett and Mr. Paul to thank for bringing you this video. So thanks guys, you're really making a difference. So I've put the pudding bowl in right in the middle of my boiler. And then I'm going to add in already boiled water because that saves me time. And you want to bring that to at least halfway up the sides of the pudding bowl. I'm going to add a little bit more just to bring it further up. So just going to top it up a little bit. So that's about two thirds, three quarters of the way up the side of the bowl. And then we now put the lid on, bring that to a boil. And we let it boil 
at a rolling boil for about 20 minutes and then we turn it down to a simmer for the rest of the cooking time and the total cooking time in there is about three hours. As the meat cooks inside the pudding it issues off its own juice as does the onions which forms a nice beautiful gravy on the inside and onto that goes a heavy tight fitting lid. I'll come back in 20 minutes and then turn the heat down to a simmer. Okay it's been 20 minutes so I'm going to turn that down to a simmer now and then put the lid back on and let it cook for the remainder of the three hours. Okay guys if you want to help me out uh, please uh, like, share, subscribe and uh, let your friends know about it. Also there is now um, a PayPal subscriber link down below in the uh, show more section and there's also a subscribe star link there if you want to help me out. Thanks in advance and uh, meanwhile the thumbs up help an awful lot. Thank you very much. Right, so it's time to uh, unwrap this beautiful pod. We're at exactly three hours. And it's been bubbling away all that time. I'll just get him out onto there. And I'll cut away at the string and lift the lid off. And there you see, it looks rather impressive already. Uh, first of all, I just went down the sides with a, with a knife just to make sure it would separate. And then to turn it, just give it the flip. Like that. And then with any luck, that should just come off like that. So there we are boys and girls, a beautiful British steak pudding. Right, all right let's cut into it and see what it looks like. I'm not getting much resistance from the meat so that tells us something doesn't it? Right, I'm going to give that a quick taste test and then uh, my brother and I will get ripped into that. So here we go, let's have a taste test, see if it's right. Mm. is rather good boys and girls. Mm. Oh and the pastry is lovely. Mm. Well that boys and girls is pretty perfect. Mm. Can't stop eating it. Seasoning's just right. I remember it seemed hours while we were waiting for these to steam as, as I was a boy because we always knew how great it would be once it was ready and uh, this is a trip down memory lane for me too, really good. Mm. Mm. Really pleased with that. 